Hello and welcome to another episode of Keeping It Real with Najee Wilkins. I am your host. Happy Friday Eve to everybody. A lot to talk about today. Um, it's going to be a fun, fun show. We're going to bring out some major news. Um, I'm going to bring it to, down to my segment of top 10 headlines going into the weekend. As you guys know, I love doing that. I'll have a film breakdown today and then I'll be talking to two uh, guests. First is going to be head coach for... Newton, it's going to be boys basketball coach Charlemagne Gibbons. We're going to be talking about the major matchup they had this past Monday, this season, and then them battling for basically the Region 1 seed tomorrow night. So we'll get into all that. And then the second guest will be at 240. That's going to be Kim Lawrence from Woodward Academy, girls basketball coach. We'll be talking to her about the matchup last Friday when they played Lovejoy and obviously what's her Manchester team going into the Region Tournament. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring on the head coach for Newton, Charlemagne Gibbons. Hey, Coach. Hey, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing great, sir. I appreciate you coming on the show today. Uh, no problem. Thank you guys for having me. Yes, sir. So, Coach, let's go ahead and get into it. You guys had the big game this past Monday, nationally televised. Uh, you guys played Wheeler, uh, one of the top players in the country, Isaiah Collier. Um, just talk to me, Coach. How was the environment in that game? Um, how do you feel your team played? Uh, first of all, it was a great environment. Anytime you get a chance to have your, you know, your team and your program and your community represented on um, on ESPN, that's always a great thing. Just, you know, I tell the guys what a great job they've done since the time they've been here to get us there. Uh, and it was a great atmosphere. I mean, you know, packed house, you know, a lot of celebrities in the crowd, a lot of NBA, excuse me, uh, higher level basketball people in the crowd. So it was just a great opportunity, great platform for, for both of the programs that, that competed on Monday night. Yes, sir. And then from that game, Coach, um, you guys were in it in the first half. You know, they kind of broke away there. Um, so just, you know, how do you feel your team played overall in that game? Well, you know, obviously after the game, you know, your reaction is, oh, guys, we could have played, you know, a lot better. First of all, hats off, I thought Willard played a great game. I thought Larry had him really prepared, and they played really well. Um, I thought we had some, some opportunities in the game to get ourselves to make it a closer game. Um, you know, especially in the second half, we had a couple of breaks and mistakes that we made. All right, no problem. All right, we'll try to get him back in a second. Um, but, yeah, you're just talking about – oh, here we go. All right, sorry, Coach, you cut out. Yeah, no, I was I was just saying that we, we had we had our opportunities in the game. I mean, I think we had a couple of things that we could have controlled a little better. Um, but that's what you learn. You go on the big stage sometimes, and sometimes some guys want to make some plays that they realize, hey, Coach, I probably should have been a little bit more patient. But you play those games to get in those situations. Uh, and that's that's the biggest part of it. Exactly. And then, Coach, for you – what makes Isaiah Collier so difficult to kind of guard? We've seen kind of throughout the game, he will push the pace of the tempo. Sometimes he will play make, and then sometimes he would just slash to the, to the rim. What makes him kind of tough to guard when he gets a full head of steam? Well, we we were we went under a lot of things with him uh, defensively to try to prevent him from getting a full head of steam, and he ended up making some deep jumpers, especially early in the game. Uh, so I think it spooked our coverage a little bit, which hats off to him when you're one of the top players in the country. Uh, you know, you, you see a game plan that the team comes up with and you're able to go do and, and hurt them with what they thought you couldn't do. Uh, it's hats off to him. I thought he did a great job of making some shots that we, we were willing to give up instead of letting him get downhill and create for everybody else. And so I thought he did a good job of making some deep threes to kind of spook our, our coverage early in the game. Yes, sir. And final question on the game, Coach. Just with the potential of seeing them down the line, possibly in the playoffs, maybe even for a state title, what was kind of your message to your team um, at the end of the game saying, hey, we, we may end up seeing them again? Well, you always tell your team that, I mean, as, as, as long as it's not the last game of the season, uh, you're going to live to fight another day. Hopefully we take things from that game. Uh, and from, from more from our perspective, like there's some things that we could have done as, as a basketball team that we traditionally do and try to impose our will on other teams that I don't think we did as well that night. And I told them, I said, you know, you have to be very disciplined to impose your will on a really talented team like Wheeler. And so I think we took a lot from that game about just standing inside of ourselves more than anything else. Yes, sir. Now, I want to talk about Ja'Kai Newton, back from injury, missed seven months, had a, I believe it's a meniscus injury. Um, just talk about, Coach, for you, what you see from him as far as his impact on the, on the team. I've seen his first two games, he was just seemed like he was getting back to, you know, how he was playing. Um, and, you know, he made an impact on both ends of the floor, especially in the Monday night game, but in the other game, you guys uh, won as well. So just talk about Ja'Kai Newton's impact uh, since he's been back from injury. Well, first of all, I think he brings a, a, a tenacity to our team. I think he brings a certain energy to our team that, you know, we've, we've, we've been able to make up for somewhat throughout the course of the year. Um, but I think having him back has really, you know, brought a certain energy and toughness to our team. And obviously he's a high-level player. I mean, 
Uh, I don't think he hadn't been out for as long as he'd been. I think he would be talking about one of the top 25 players in the country uh, at the end of the day. So adding that guy back into a fold for any team has been a punch in the arm for us. Uh, and as he kind of gets himself settled moving forward, I think you're going to get a, continue to see a better version of him uh, game in and game out. Yes, sir. Now, you've coached Stephon Castle for a while now. He's one of the top players in the country as well. You get to see him day in, day out. You get to see him practice. You get to see him work out, coach. But what are some things that you see that maybe is not talked about a lot that he does that's kind of under the radar, just that makes him such a great player? Uh, well, well, first of all, the thing I like about him more is he's he's done it through the whole process. I mean, when he came here as a freshman, we had, you know, two Division One guards who were in front of him, and he came in and worked every day, and he really grew his game. Uh, step by step, and so he hasn't skipped any steps in the process. And I think for our team and some of our younger players, they're able to see that and see the work that he puts in. So I think one of the legacies that he'll leave here is, you know, day by day and piece by piece, you can actually get there without having to skip steps. And so I think that's a big part of what he's left uh, for our program and for, for some of the younger kids coming up behind him. Yes, sir. And, and what makes him – able to kind of like he's never sped up like it's almost like he has his own pace you see a lot of time with a lot of NBA guys like Luka Doncic is an example this guy that's never sped up off his dribble Castle reminds me just of that just far as his ball handling like it doesn't matter what pressure you apply he's always in rhythm in movement in motion and he can never you know get rattled what just allows him to kind of play with that effortlessness well some of it is some of it is maturity um you know he's, he's a mature kid uh, and, he's, and he's a very skilled basketball player, but he's also got great size. And so, uh, you know, no matter how you're going to try to play him, he's got the size to look over the defense. He's got the size to be able to take on the double teams. And so I think that confidence allows him uh, to be able to, to play at his own pace. Uh, if it needs to be faster, he can get up and down the floor faster. If it needs to be slower, uh, he can do that. So I think with his size and just his confidence in what he's doing allows him to play with that pace. Yes, sir. And another guy I want to talk about, probably not talk about as much, but uh, Marcus Whitlock, MJ, I noticed him as well. He – makes a big impact on your team, Coach. You know, he plays the four well. He shoots the ball well. Just, you know, what other impacts he brings to your team and how fun is it to coach him? Man, he, first of all, he's a player. Like, we, we talk about this all the time. You know, different college coaches are calling in and, like, Coach, what do you think? I said, man, he, he's a, he's a flat-out basketball player uh, that can get it done. He's gotten it done for us, you know, throughout the time he's been here. Uh, he's got it done on the AAU circuit. So just having another guy like that, um, that this, this Division One caliber that can score the basketball in, you know, a variety of different ways and can get it going really quick uh, kind of helps us when we can't load up on – just on Jakai or just on Stefan, you have to definitely respect what he's going to be able to do. And I think he's done it night in and night out. That's why he's such a high-level player. Yes, sir. And you guys this year have played a national schedule. You've played some great teams, Coach. Um, what do you think your team has learned most from that schedule? And um, what do you think it allows them to kind of build going into now, you know, about to be the region tournament and then obviously the playoffs? Well, hopefully it'll build the kind of confidence that, that, you know, we felt that we had one of the best teams uh, in the state of Georgia. We also felt like we had one of the best teams, uh, you know, throughout the country. And so getting a chance to go out and prove that against, you know, the likes of IMG and Lake Highlands and Duncanville, uh, you know, just, just to name a few, I think that's got us, you know, confidence-wise where when we see some of the top in-state teams, we feel like we're just as good as those teams, if not better, uh, because of the schedule we played all year long. We've been super competitive. I think the only double-figure loss we may have had all season was Wheeler the other night. So I think the guys are – you know, we're locked in to, to what they're able to do and what we're able to compete against because of the schedule we've had all year long. Yes, sir. And and for you, Coach, do you make that schedule like that every year or, you know, to play against, like, the top of the top just so your kids get exposed to it? Or is that, you know, a this year thing? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Oh, no, no. That's that's always the thing I've done. I mean, I was when I was at Morgan County years ago, we had a very, very tough schedule. When we had, you know, Tukey Brown and C.J. Terman and Jalen Ingram and all those guys. Uh, and then here at Newton, we played an extremely tough schedule. Uh, from the first year here, even when we had Caleb Bird here the first year. Uh, last year we played prolific prep. Uh, we went to the Sugar Bowl and played down there. So, I mean, we've, we've been playing a very, very tough schedule. And then I also want to say that Georgia basketball is some of the best basketball in the country. So, you know, just because you may not be playing, quote, unquote, all the out-of-state teams, if you've got to play the likes of Wheeler and McEachern and Grayson and uh, Westlake and all those schools year in and year out, to me, that's a version of a national schedule as well. So I think sometimes we get so caught up with playing the out-of-state teams, we don't give the respect to the Georgia teams and how good they are. Yes, sir. And another topic, Coach, talk about uh, you guys got the win the other night, Tuesday night against Parkview, 79-70. to What stood out to you in that game, Coach? What do you like that your team did well and was it kind of able to come out with the win? Well, first of all, um, three weeks ago, I think we dropped one to Parkview over at their place because they played really well. So coming back in, you don't want to drop that game. And then coming off of the Wheeler game, uh, 
interesting to see how guys react the second night after just 24 hours ago, you, you know, you played a nationally televised game. But I thought the guys came in there and they, you know, they kind of, you know, had a little players only meeting about what they thought they needed to be doing on Tuesday, which is what I love about these guys. They stay together. Uh, and I thought you came out on Tuesday night and we had great energy at the gate. We really shared the basketball. Um, a couple of different guys were able to get into the scoring column to open the floor up. And then obviously Stefan had a really good game down the stretch uh, to finish it off. So I was pretty excited about the way we played on Tuesday night. Yes, sir. And then spound on that, I want to talk about your JV team really quick, Coach. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, they won the JV championship. Is that correct? Yeah, well, we played two different versions of it. We won the Gwinnett County Championship, and we also won um, the New Rock Championship out here. And our JV team was undefeated this year, and majority wow. ninth graders. Uh, so we are pretty, pretty excited about um, – the, where the future of Newton basketball is headed. I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of the same formula I think I used at Morgan County. He's really invested in our younger players and really uh, putting a lot behind them. we got a really great coaching staff who did a great job with our young guys this year. And so we're pretty excited about the future. I think those those guys are definitely going to be the future of what Newton basketball is. And I just wanted to, I, I wanted to ask you about that, too. You mentioned the future and how excited you are. How is Newton able to – you mentioned the coaching, but how is Newton able to consistently – you know, build such great young players. You mentioned Castle being a freshman, being behind the two Division One guards, and then, you know, working on his game and getting to where he is today. But how are they able to do it so consistently? Most schools you'll see, Coach, they'll have people transfer in, but you guys are doing it the homegrown way. Kids that are coming in, um, freshmen, sophomores, you know, playing really good, JV ball, and then going into the varsity level and excelling as well. So what just allows that new program to continue to do that? Well, one of the things I say about about Newton is it not not just me as a coach, but they've traditionally had a lot of talent in this program. I think one of the things we've tried to do is just put us on a different platform as far as exposure wise, uh, via state and also nationally. Um, but but for myself and for our coach, my coaching staff, um, we we invest in these kids young and try to teach them, you know, the the, the basics of what you're going to need to advance to a higher levels. Most of the stuff we teach them is not for right now; it's going to be for your next stop. Uh, it's kind of just like I said, the kind of the same formula I've always used as a coach kind of building programs moving forward is to make sure that, you know, whenever these kids leave here, whatever their next stop is, whether it's Division One, Division Two, junior college, maybe it's another school, uh, that they're definitely going to be prepared with the basic fundamentals of getting themselves ready and understanding the hard work and dedication and then competing at a super high level day in and day out in practice. Again, my JV guys go undefeated this year. Well, you know, you're going to get some of the best players in the country day in and day out in your workouts and practice. So I think that breeds – uh, the competition, I think that breeds uh, guys' hunger to kind of get to that level. Yes, sir, definitely. And, you know, for you, Coach, big game coming up tomorrow night. You're going to play Newton – I mean, sorry, Grayson for the basically number one seed in the region tournament. Uh, what do you remember from the first game? And what are some things that Grayson does well? Well, first of all, Pierce does a great job of controlling the tempo of the game. He, You know, he's got two big kids down inside that they pounded into, and then he's got really good guard play. Our guys can shoot the basketball from outside. I thought we, you know, I thought we stymied him a little bit with some press and some zone, which I know they'll be prepared for this time. And so we're going to have to make some adjustments on our end. But, I mean, you know, Newton and Grayson has been war since I've gotten into this league. I don't expect anything else tomorrow night. Um, it's just a, you know, very physically – uh, contested game, um, you know, with a lot of high-level players. I mean, you know, year in and year out, there's multiple, multiple Division One players in this game. And so I think tomorrow night will be the same, just a really highly contested game. Uh, both teams are going to have to make some shots, make some adjustments. And so, you know, just excited about those matchups. That's one of the reasons when I came back from college, I wanted to get into 7A because, you know, every time you put your jersey on, it's a really good opponent uh, across from you and really good coaching staffs across from you as well. And so it makes it pretty exciting. Yeah, that's a good point. And then – Coach, just talk about the region really quick. You already played the national schedule, but the region schedule as well is, you know, pretty pretty tough as well. I mean, you got South Gwinnett in there. You have Parkview. You got yourselves, uh, Grayson. Just, you know, how tough is that region that you're playing in? Well, we had Archer to this region as well this year. And so, they, you know, we, we right. beat them actually last year to go to the Final Four. And so uh, I, I tell people all the time, and they think it's a joke, I said I had to play a national schedule to get ready for my region schedule. <laughs> uh, and, if, and if you look at this region over the last, you know, the last four years we've been here, I think the first year I was here, uh, Shiloh was in this region as well as, as Grayson. They were probably two of the top 25 teams in the country at one point. And traditionally, year in and year out, there's, you know, three to four teams uh, that's going to be ranked in the top 10 and 7, 8 each and every year. So I think right now there's four teams in our region that's in the top 10. So there, there's nowhere to run every night, Tuesday night, Friday night, the following Nah, I mean, I, I agree with you, Coach. I definitely think it's um, a tough. So this is an overall question, Coach, your basketball program. What did you think are some things you can fine-tune, um, you can work on just to kind of sharpen uh, 
prior to going into the region tournament, uh, hopefully a deep playoff run? Uh, you know, clearly free throw shooting kind of plagued us early in the season. Uh, I think if you go back and look at some of the quote unquote national games that we played, uh, if we've been a little better from the line, we probably pull out a couple of those wins. Uh, and then just, just us being a little bit more patient. We've got a lot of talented guys who can really play. And so just for us being a little bit more patient uh, offensively, I think is going to help us down the stretch. And I think the guys will buy into that. I think that uh, sometimes we have, all have our little angst about, you know, opportunities and things like that. But I think at this point in the season, um, with guys recruiting and, and, and some of their fanfare, I think guys are more comfortable where they are. So I think that's setting us up for a really good run uh, in the state tournament. All right, Coach, two more questions. I'll let you go. One, how important, Coach, is to, to have guys that's been there, done that? Last year, again, Final Four finished. You got Stephon Castle as a senior. MJ Whitlock's a senior. Ja'Kai Newton's a senior. A lot of your main pieces and core players are seniors. So how important is that going into, you know, these major high-profile matchups down the line, having that kind of senior leadership? I think it's great because you're going to get in these games, and I tell guys all the time, other teams really good too. So they're going to make some runs. And I think when you have the senior leadership, they understand those things. They don't panic. They don't try to shoot the 10-point shots. Uh, they get it back piece by piece by piece. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things for having seniors on your team is they understand that it's going to take, you know, 32 minutes of basketball. And there's no way you're going to knock anybody out in the first five minutes of the game, nor will, uh, you know, if you're down early, will that mean that the game's going to be over either? You're going to stay in it and, and, and be able to work it back, uh, you know, basket by basket and stop by stop. And so I think that's what senior leadership does. It brings a certain calmness uh, to some of your younger players on the team. Definitely. And final question, Coach, um, tell me what's the ultimate goal of this team and how do you complete that this season? Well, obviously, and I tell people this all the time, um, every every year that I've coached basketball, the goal is to be the state champion. So, you know, this year's mission is no different than last year's mission or the year before that. Um, to get there, you know, you got to be able to stay together. Um, you got to have some timely shooting. You got to make sure guys stay clear of injuries. Uh, and then you got to make sure the guys understand when it's a certain guy's night and he's rolling, we got to go with that. That's going to get us into the next game. The only thing you're trying to do now is be one point ahead of the other team after 32 minutes of play. It's a great point, Coach. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Good luck to your team tomorrow night and going down the line as well. In the region tournament and obviously the playoffs. I'll definitely be watching. And hopefully I can get you on the show again before the season's over. Hey, absolutely, man. Uh, thank you guys and thank all the fans for tuning in. Yes, sir. We'll see you in the next one, Coach. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, guys. So that was Newton head coach, Charlamagne Gibbons. Um, definitely has a great resume. Great team, man. Um, if you guys didn't see that game, um, you missed out. Um, it was electric from the start. I didn't get to go to the game, but I seen it on ESPNU. I mean, just the creme de la creme. Again, as he mentioned, Lake Highlands, Duncanville. It's the teams they played this season. It's only going to prep them for that deep playoff run. And obviously the things they want to accomplish. Last year they lost in the Final Four by four points, 51-47 to Norcross. So, I mean, again, if you look at the 7A landscape, it's going to be some great teams. You got Wheeler. You got Norcross. You got um, – Grayson, Newton, uh, McKeetran, Pebblebrook, all those teams are going to battle it out, and I think it's going to be really intriguing and interesting to see who comes out on the other side. So if you guys are doing anything tomorrow, quick headline, go to the Grayson versus Newton game tomorrow. Uh, it'll be, I think, at 7 p.m. Um, much watch uh, basketball. That's going to be for the Region 1 seed, which is really important, and you basically stamp your ticket to the playoffs you win the Region Tournament. So definitely tune into that tomorrow night. Uh, we'll take a quick break. Thank our sponsors, Georgia Farm Bureau. We'll see you on the other side. Mm -hmm. Our mission has always been to support Georgia farmers. That's why we created Georgia Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance Company, providing financial protection that farmers needed. While this remains the same today, we've grown to protect all Georgians through home, auto, and life insurance. From the very beginning and into the future, we stand for every Georgia community. We are our Farm Bureau. Yeah, a lot going on with that uh, NBA trade deadline. If you guys didn't see Blockbuster news, uh, Kevin Durant got traded to the Suns. Uh, that is going to be intriguing when he comes back. Devin uh, Booker, obviously, still, still dealing with uh, a hamstring injury. So, be interesting to see. Uh, be a great season. I think, really, the West playoffs are going to be electric. But let's go ahead and talk about some results and some major news across the basketball landscape really quick. Uh, the next guest is going to be here at 2.40, so I'll talk about some news and some major things going on across the high school sports landscape. So let's go ahead and get started. Jace Nathaniel reached the 1,000-point mark as Lanier. They won 79-65, uh, defeating Hambersham Central. Great game for them. Um, 
Let's see, it was senior night for Drew. They had Cedric Taylor had 27 points in that game. Um, Israel Lamont and Kenyatta Wade both had 14, and then TJ Robinson had 10. So that's the news as far as that. And then far as some Gwinnett basketball, Mill Creek got the win against Collins Hill, 55-53 in OT. Jonathan Taylor in that game had 25 points. Um, and then for... Collins Hill, Nate Arrow had 15 points and 12 boards. Central defeated Mountain View 69-68. Uh, Malik Rideout had 16 points and 3 assists. And then for Mountain View, Michael White had 26. All right, for Grayson, they got their win against South 64-50. to uh, Major game there. Uh, the Rams, led by Anthony Austin, had 20 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists. And Jakari Harris added 12 all right, and then for Peachtree Ridge, uh, they played Duluth. They won 61-53. Big game for them. They are now set at 20-5, 20 24 points from Connor Teasley and 15 from Byron Martin. All right, Berkmar defeated Discovery 52-42. to Eddie Cook scored 29 points in that one. Norcross defeated Wilson Academy 92-65. Uh, to Bilal Abdur Rahman had 23 points, 4 steals, 3 assists. Lamarian Jordan had 16 points, 6 boards, 3 blocks in that one. All right, and then Buford defeated Decula 72 to 61 in that game. Um, you had JC defeating Northview 67 to 45. Noah Harry had 21 points, 6 boards, and 2 assists in that game for the Spartans. Wesleyan defeated the Pickens 62 to 48. Josh Cable and James McGriff have both scored 20 points each in that game. Thomas Chipman added 12 points and 10 rebounds in that victory. Hebron defeated Franklin County 58-54 uh, in that one. Um, Taj Glover had 19 points, 5 boards, 2 assists. And then Jelani Smith had 10 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 steals. All right, then they had Bates County. They won 80-77 to against Providence. Uh, Providence was number 10. Uh, the, let's see. Uh, they got 30 points from Samuel Thacker, and that one for Providence just wasn't enough. Um, but, yeah, they did get defeated 80-77. to All right, now let's go to the girls' basketball. Some major news. Um, Amaya Lewis, she scored her 1,000th point on Tuesday. Um, major news for her. Mattia Gell gets her region play of the year for the third year in a row. Major news there. Um, to the River Ridge senior, um, great uh, career for her, um, major news there. And then going to some other just big news, softball, Northgate Jackie Burns, she committed to Georgia Southwestern. She led Northgate with three home runs this past season. Um, so congratulations to her. She is moving on to her, her career on the next level. So shout out to her. And then for soccer, you had um, – Milton go down to RHS. <clears throat> excuse me, it's two to one on Tuesday night. So major news there. We got obviously we got soccer season kicking off. So definitely stay tuned to that. I'll be giving updates throughout. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and talk about some football now. Some major news. Uh, Roswell Chase Morrison. He is 2024 linebacker. He received an offer from FAU. So shout out to him. He got one more year. He'll be a senior going into the next season. So major offer he just landed. Kale cornerback Nelson Wongerin, uh, he committed to Georgia Tech. Um, another major Georgia player going to Georgia Tech. Um, yeah, it's a lot of players. You, know I mean? you got Chris Elko, Ben Gunthery, uh, Bryce Dobson. Some major players going to uh, Georgia Tech. He led that kill attack this past season on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, they pick up another phenomenal player. Um, so that will be really intriguing to see how that all plays out so that's far as just you know my news for the day what's been going on in the high school sports world um again major i think it's one major game left far as the boys basketball side as far as who's going to play um and then it's going to determine obviously you know who's going to get the you know whatever season the region tournament and that's going to determine the playoffs so um girls are officially done um they'll be starting their region tournaments actually this weekend so i'll talk to coach kim lawrence about that so that'll be really intriguing. But, yeah, that's the news as far as what's going on. Um, I'm going to get into or actually tell the tape um, that I'm doing today. This is going to be on receiver 
for Johns Creek. His name is Kyle Vaca. Um, I think he's going to be a major cog next year. They did. Oh, they did hire the head coach, um, obviously for from Cambridge. Cambridge defensive coordinator is now the head coach for Johns Creek. I think his name is. Let me verify. Let's see. Hold on, y'all. See if I get the name right. Can't seem to find it, but I think his name was Josh Rothwell. So Drew Connell actually came from Milton last year. Um, he was their head coach, but he stepped away after one season at the home with them. He announced it via Twitter Monday. Um, this article came out on January 30th, so about a week or so ago. Um, but yeah, they were two and eight last year. Definitely a rough start. Um, but yes, he decided to leave the program. They had an impressive 2021 season. They were nine and four. Um, you know, and he succeeded. Mac Matt. Helmrich um, as the coach, but I'll give an update obviously next week on that guys um, of who the coaches I can't seem to find I seen it earlier on the Twitter sphere, but I can't seem to really find anything at the moment But let's go ahead and get into the tell of the tape. I'm going to analyze for today um, I think it'll be really intriguing this young player I think going into the next season is going to have a phenomenal year you guys stay tuned for him um, he has a lot of athleticism. I think his first step is phenomenal. Um, he's really able to beat man coverage, and he's not just a deep ball guy. He's a guy that can take a route, uh, inward breaking route or outward breaking out route, and he can take it for the distance as well. So let's go ahead and roll his tape. 18. Should be three box. All right. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate it. All right, guys. So this is his tape right here. Really intriguing right here. So here, he just makes a phenomenal catch. I mean, just snagging the ball. This is against Kale. Look at this deep route here. He burns his defender, beats the coverage over top. I mean, you can't get much better than that. Here, right here, he's just going to get the first up. Look. One, two. Boom. I'm gone. Then, boom. Perfect ball. He breaks the defender, gets a big play on the route. All right, here again. So what I liked about this and if you can ground, pause it for one second. You might have to go out and then go back in. You got to go out. Like, you got to come back to me. Yeah, and then there's a pause button down below. You got to go to 24 and hit pause. But you're going to have to, like, push it all the way back. Do you see it? No? Okay, hold on, y'all. I'm going to hold Graham for a sec. Hold on. So here we're going to cut back. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, want to do out on this. Okay, so here. Again with his feet. Phenomenal. Breaks the defender in one step. You're going to have it here again. Here he's going to run a double move inside, past him. Breaks the defender. If he catches his feet, I mean, that's a touchdown, right? Here he's going to do an inward out-breaking route, right? Boom. Makes him boom from the defender. Makes a miss. Goes all the way for the first down. I mean, that's what you want to see out of your receiver. All right, here. 
This is going to be a deep ball. Here, I got an instant replay on this because I wanted to break this down even more, okay? So let's look at the instant replay. It's about to come up right now. All right, so here we're going to slow it down. Here, another deep route. You're going to see good ball by the quarterback. But look, I want you all to see after he catches the ball. Boom. One, two, cut inside. And I'm going to use my speed and athleticism because I'm going to beat you, right? You can't get any better than that. You can't dial it up any better. I mean, that's just a great move from him. One, two, inside, and then he breaks the defender all the way for the touchdown. Phenomenal play by Kyle Vaca. All right, here again, he's going to run a deep route, just getting right past the defender every time. It's just the straight line speed. That's what stands out to me for Kyle. Great straight line speed at the wide receiver position. He can get past here. This is a Corky Kell game. Again, great straight line speed, past the defender, goes up, catches the ball, gets the touchdown. I mean, great play, phenomenal. Every time he's beating his defender, off the ball, one, two steps, quick, and then he's gone. All right, here again, it's the final of it, I believe. He's just going to break his defender. Great catch with the ball. Reaches out, catches it, gets the touchdown. So that's Kyle Vaca. That's my kind of tell of the tape of him. Um, I'm going to have Graham roll it one more time. It's a specific play I'm going to outline that, I, that really impressed me about Kyle. All right, so roll it. It's going to roll, guys. It's a play he makes with a break. The play is going to break down. Here's just a great catch. The play is going to break down. He's going to do what you only see at the college level and you only see at the NFL level. So you see this with Mahomes and things like that. The play breaks down. He's still staying on his feet. He's making a play, and he's getting open for the quarterback. So that's next level stuff. That's D1 type of ball. Things you do with that. I'm going to outline it in just a second. I think it's this play right here. Boom. It's going to break down. He's going to keep moving. And then right here, boom, makes the catch, finds the area for the quarterback. You can cut it, Graham. Um, finds the area for the quarterback where he can throw the ball to. It's just a phenomenal play. Again, you don't see that a lot on the high school level. You know, you see guys kind of they'll stop on a play. Once they run a route, that's it. But for him to already have that ability to know, okay, hey, the play broke down. My quarterback needs somewhere to throw the football. I'm going to find where that spot is in the defense, whether it's a zone, whether it's the play breaking down. And for him to do that, I think, shows a lot about his growth and where he's going to be on the next level or just even next season. So just shout out to Kyle Vaca. I wanted to analyze his, analyze his film today. I think he's a great player. I think he's going to be somebody to watch out for next year for that football team. Uh, remember, wide receiver, his Twitter handle is at Kyle Vaca. Definitely go check him out. It's going to be some great, excuse me, some great film. Um, check out his huddle. I mean, just absolutely phenomenal. So I definitely wanted to highlight him today. Um, I think he does a great job. Um, just great straight line speed. Um, he doesn't go down with the first tackle. Breaks that, and he turns it into a big play. So hope you guys enjoyed that segment of my tell of the tape for this week. So we got a couple more minutes um, before the head coach kind of comes on um, for Woodward Academy. I want to talk about their season really quick before she actually comes on. They've had a phenomenal year. Um, and they beat some really good teams. They beat some really good teams. And I'm going to talk about that really quick before she actually comes on. So let's see. All right, so right now they're 19-6, to 11-3 in the region. They're not going to get the region one seed, unfortunately. They did lose to Lovejoy um, last Friday. But, I mean, some of these games they've already played some top-tier teams. Like they played Griffin, right? So they lost the Griffin game, who's 20-4. They're 11-1 in the region. They lost by six. That was the second game of the year. Um, and, you know, in that one, you know, um, Shania Ross, you know, she had a good game. Uh, Sarah Lewis, who's, you know, their senior, you know, she's, I think, committed to, to, to Stege University. You know, she had a decent game. She had 14 points in that one. Kayla Whitner, their sophomore, has continued to impress. Um, she had, in that one, she had 17 points, right? So they lean on those two to kind of make up the bulk of their scoring. Uh, but I thought he did a good, pretty good job defensively, um, making it kind of tough for Griffin. Um, they ended up falling short, but again, that's a team um, that's going to be, you know, a force to be reckoned with, obviously in 4A. Um, so, you know, that's a big game. That was early in the season. Um, they had another uh, Forest Park, their region opponent. They lost by three. Um, that was November 29th. That's another team you're going to see, obviously, out there in 6A. That's going to be competing. Um, for a title. Um, so, you know, they lost someone by three. Um, they beat Rockdale County, who has a really good team, 8-7 um, and seven on the season this year, 9-5 um, and five as a region opponent. Um, you know, they have some studs. Daniel Carnegie, their point guard, she's averaging 20 a game. 
Um, so to be able to beat them, you know, it was a big win um, for the program. Um, and then another team they beat out in 5A. This is a 5A powerhouse. Um, let me see. Hold on. 5A powerhouse. So they beat them. This was January 14th. They beat Kale. Um, as you guys all know, Kale has Crystal Henderson. She's a player that just got her jersey retired. I mean, again, I haven't heard of personally um, getting your jersey retired while still being a player. Um, I think that, to me, that's the first time I've ever heard of that. So that just shows how special she is and how good Crystal Henderson is. But they have a great team. They haven't lost a lot of games this season. Um, you know, they have a great uh zone defense and they make it tough for you to make outside shots even in that game they didn't shoot the ball well you know they shot a total of 22 percent from the field their best shooter um and that one she only had two shots was delaney cooper um but besides that it was a tough shooting night so it was a real grinded out defensive game but they were able to kind of come away victorious and the guys don't know kale this year they're 11 and 0 in the region 18 and 5 record overall and they've played tough opponents too they played the griffins they played the hoovers they played st francis they play Brookwood, who is the top team in 7 8. So, Kell is not a team to, to to snuff at. That's a phenomenal basketball team. So, for them to get that win, I think just says a lot um, of what Warwick Academy has been doing. Now, Lovejoy, they have a tough squad. Um, they have really good players. Uh, Brianna Preston, she's a great, you know, dribble. She has a great first step. She can beat you off the ball. Um, she does a great job when the ball is not in her hands, um, being able to get open, being able to find open teammates, good, great playmaker, great facilitator. Um, so that's what I seen kind of sells to me in the game. And obviously I'll give it to with uh, Coach uh, Lawrence in a second. But, yeah, she was just great job breaking the press a little bit. Excuse me, getting downhill, being able to find the open man. And then they ran a zone, too, when they played half-court defense. They didn't trap into late, which they had a little bit of success with, but it was a little bit too little too late. But Lanaya Foster, you know, she kind of stood right there on the block and, you know, in the paint area. And, and when they had the zone that Water Camera was applying, she was able to hit her and she was able to get easy buckets and easy baskets. So that was kind of the difference that stood out to me in the game. And then obviously the turnovers um, that Water Academy had a lot of turnovers in that game. But, you know... I think it's a lot coach to be able to take away from that and be able to tell her team as they try to prep for the region tournament, which I believe is going to be this weekend. I'll find out more from her in just a second. But, yeah, I just think 6A basketball, like if I had to say and break it all down, what what are some conferences or classifications you should watch going into the postseason or even region tournaments? I mean, 6A basketball on the girls' side, Rockdale, um, you got to look out for River Ridge, um, Got to look out for Forest Park, Lovejoy, Warwick Academy is nothing to snuff at. That's going to be a really good conference as far as the girls' side. Obviously, 7-8 uh, for the girls as well is going to be good. Brookwood, Norcross, Buford. Um, that's going to be really intriguing. Um, and then 7-8 boys. I mean, that's going to be good. You heard it from Coach Gibbons. He even said it. I believe that's one of the best classifications. And why I wanted to come back to the high school level is because you're going to always play tough teams and, and kind of almost even in your state a nationally – almost kind of rank schedule. We're going to play tough teams, and that's what it is in 7A. I mean, I don't, I couldn't even tell you right now who I think is going to win it. Obviously, it really looks like they may have the advantage, but you can't sleep on Newton. You can't sleep on Norcross. You know, you can't sleep on McEachern. You can't sleep on Pebble Brook. Like, any one of those teams can go toe-to-toe -to -toe and just have a good night and then just show up and, and just go crazy. So, 7A is going to be really intriguing this um, season. Um, seeing down the stretch who it goes. And you guys, make sure you tune into to scoreatl.com. We're going to have all that. We'll have a basketball guide. Uh, we'll have our kind of final rankings going into the uh, playoffs. We have all of our content on there. So it'll be really intriguing going into next year to see – or not next year, I'm sorry. Going into the playoffs to see who's going to emerge victorious, who's going to win it all. I think it's going to be the creme de la creme of basketball. Um, so be good. Hmm. Yes, if you can. Um, so, yeah, I can't wait. But – Let's take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back on the other side with the head coach. Our mission has always been to support Georgia farmers. That's why we created Georgia Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance Company, providing financial protection that farmers needed. While this remains the same today, we've grown to protect all Georgians through home, auto, and life insurance. From the very beginning and into the future, we stand for every Georgia community. We are all Farm Bureau. All right, guys, we're back. Just waiting on the coach. Um, but, yes, again, I can't wait. Should be a um, 
great interview. Um, I'm actually excited going into the weekend. A lot of major matchups, uh, region tournaments, and everything's like that. Um, we do have a show tomorrow, so make sure you tune into that. That's going to be um, GHSA Drive for the State Title. Um, Craig show tomorrow. He'll have on some great guests. Hope you guys have been enjoying our new content, the highlights that we'll be breaking down, and obviously having different guests on and things like that. So, um, yeah, we are year round now. Uh, the only breaks we'll have is vacation. Um, you know, which will be a couple of weeks out of the year. And then, obviously, we'll have the one at the end of the year after Georgia League Classic. So, we hope you guys are loving our content. Um, bring on a guest in just a second. We have her yet, Graham? Not yet. Okay. So, still waiting on uh, Coach uh, Kim Lawrence um, for the interview. But, again, guys, I think it's going to be a um, – got her? All right. Let's bring her on. Hey, Coach. Hi. How's it going? It's going good. I appreciate you coming on the show. I appreciate you having me. Thank you very yes, much. Uh, yes, ma'am. So, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. And, and I'll say this too, Coach. You were very consistent. A lot of people I hit up, um, you know, they'll send one and that's it. But you kept hitting me up, which I appreciate, and reaching out to me to be on the show. So, thanks a lot. Yeah. No, I apologize that it took so long. I'm sorry. It's just it's I get a crazy it. time of the year, and I have a new job responsibility. So, things. So, I apologize for the inconsistent no in my part in getting with it, but I'm glad we were able to make this happen. So. Yes, ma'am. All right, coach. So let's talk about this season. Um, you're 19 and six coach. How are you feeling right now going into the region tournament? I believe that's this weekend. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and mm -hmm. what are some areas you think you need to work on? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I had a quick team meeting with my, uh, with the girls on, uh, just, a couple of days ago just to get a feel of where their mind was and how their their mindset and they're feeling pretty they're feeling pretty good about it um they know that if we go out and we do what we've been preaching and talking about um all season we we you know we put our tent we put ourselves in a position to be successful so but it's just a matter of just being consistent with it and actually going out and doing it so yeah. definitely coach and you know, I want to talk about Sarah Lewis really quick. Um, I was able to see you guys uh, Friday night when you guys played Lovejoy. I was at the game, enjoyed watching the game. Mm -hmm. uh, she seemed like to me, she's just a player. She's been with you for a while now, but she's a great shot. She's a great flow of the game. She gets her teammates involved. Once you get in that paint area, it's like she's hard to really stop. So just tell, tell me about from a senior side, her leadership. What has she brought to the team this year? And what has she just meant to you just coaching her throughout her career so far? Oh. Oh, well, <laughs> the words to Sarah, that, that's a lot. Um, she's definitely been with me since her freshman year, actually. Wow. Um, so uh, if she has the, op the opportunity, actually, to be one of the most decorated um, players at Ward Academy if we, you know, we're the last team standing to come here in March. Um, but what the, the growth that she has, that she has demonstrated from her freshman year to now, um, she came in. Freshman year, you know, the freshman jitters, freshman not really realizing her potential. So it was a it was a lot of lot of talking up, lot of understanding that you have the potential to play here, you know, D one. You have that potential, and just talking to her and um, and so it's good to see her her confidence come in and understand that she is good. She is a good player. Um, she de deserves to be recognized um, as one of you know one of the top players in the state. Um, and just her, again, her leadership, what she brings on the floor. She can shoot it from the outside. She can take it in. And most times she's running our point sometimes too. Um, just distributing that basketball to her teammates. So, uh, she's, it's been a blessing. Let me just say that. They haven't to be able to coach Sarah Lewis and the, actually, I mean, all the players I've coached truly, but, um, since you specifically asked about Sarah, um, she has been a blessing just watching her growth from freshman year to now um, with the opportunity to go continue her career at George Washington is pretty awesome. So I'm just glad to have been able to be a part of it. Yes, ma'am. And I actually got a couple more players I want to talk about. I think you've done a phenomenal job. I looked at the roster. You got a lot of youth and sophomores. I do want to roll yeah. a clip really quick, Coach, while I'm on here. I want you to analyze it with me, and then we'll talk about it after. But, I was again, I was at the game, so I got some of the – Best plays I could get. Um, I just mm -hmm. want to see what you think and just tell me what you think about Lovejoy just as a team. So we're going to roll that in just a second. Okay. So am I – I'm watching. I'm waiting on it. Are you – you want me to talk about Lovejoy right now? No, no not yet. No, no. We're going to watch it together oh, okay, okay. and then, yeah, and then we're going to talk. Yes, ma'am. Got you. Okay. Uh, try 16. There you go. Can you see it well, Coach? Yes.
can roll it back, Graham. Okay, Coach. So I know it probably wasn't the best highlights, forgive me, but I just wanted no. you both or both of us to look at it. And what stood out to me really quick was, like I said, your youth, right? So mm -hmm. you got a player, Kayla Whitner. She had that still there. Um, she takes it coast to coast, lays the ball up. So talk about her first. And then after that, you have another sophomore um, I want to get her name right. Uh, Cameron Herring, right? She had the block mm -hmm. at the end there. So yep. you got these players playing in big time moments, making defensive plays, turning into offense. Just tell me first what Whitner's meant to your team and what you like from her growth perspective, and then following up with Cameron Herring after. Um, well, for yes, we are we are young. The majority of our team is full of um, pretty much freshmen and sophomores. Um, we do have our two seniors uh, with. Uh, Sarah being one of them, um, but Kayla, uh, what she can bring, what she's brought to our team this season, she can shoot the basketball, she loves to shoot the three, um, but she can also take it to the basket, and just, uh, she's been getting more and more confident in her shot, uh, once you, she sees it go in one time, it's, you know, you can pretty much count it and go on in um, from there on out, um, and numbers, and Cam Herring, the same way. That's our that's our shooter shooter right there. Um, so you can hit it from the outside, and we're really working on her mid range game because people understand ten is a shooter. That's what they say. Ten is a shooter, so they try to run off the three. So we're just you know working on her mid range game because she has the potential. I mean, they both yes pretty much have the potential. Do. Yeah, to to go play at a high level. Um, and I believe that them being able to play last year uh, as freshmen on the team they um actually were pretty much on our varsity last year and to see and the experience that they received then um, um we had a great group of seniors that they were to, able to learn from and watch and um that you know so they were able to be a part of so they kind of they know right they know what it takes um right. they've been there a little bit it's a little different um because you know last year they just you know they got to be by the time they got into most games, you know, our seniors had kind of put it out out um, of the way. So there's not much pressure. But this year, um, they've actually – they've been in there from the beginning. Um, so, you know, we've, we've been playing some tough teams here this year, and they've been getting a lot, of, a lot of experience. And just to see their growth and their confidence come in each and every game is just, yeah, I'm enjoying it. So. Yes, and, and for you, Coach, you know – Sometimes it could be a challenge, right, with how the era is now and everything. Coaching young, you know, and sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, your players, you know, their mind could be in other spots. They could have a lot going on. But mm -hmm. just, you know, mm -hmm. how do you keep them level-headed, Coach, just to be able to, to stay focused and locked in and, you know, play at that optimal level? Um, well, my thing is what I've always – I've been preaching this from um, – since I learned, heard about it, um, it's just play present. Um, and that's – and that's and that's what I try to teach them. Like you, what can you control? What what is it that you can control in this moment? You missed a layup. Okay, can you do anything about that layup that you missed? No. So why are we focused on it? Like basketball, basketball is too quick for you to be, you know, ruminating over something that happened five seconds ago. Still, and so that's what I pretty much pre preach to all my players: just play present, stay in the moment, um, and understand you can't think too far. You know. Don't don't worry too much about the future, and don't focus worry too don't worry at all about, really about the past. The past is gone. The most you need to focus on the future is just trying to you know anticipate what the what the offense or the defense your know, opponent is about to do next. But we can't be focusing on mistakes and different things like that, and we don't get a call. A call doesn't go our way. So just trying to get them to teach them to stay present. You know that's that's pretty much my main focus with with these girls. So. Got you. And let's go back to the game yeah. really quick. Uh, started the game rough. Mm -hmm. I think it was 16-2. But then, you know, you mm -hmm. guys were making plays. Got back in the game. And then towards the mm -hmm. end, they had a double-digit lead. But then you go on. Oh. You cut out. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hey, sorry about that, Coach. It oh. cut out. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. So, yes, I was talking about the game. Um, it was 16-2, right? You guys get back in the game. You yeah. make the stops. Then towards the end, it's double digits, but then you make a 15-4 run, get right back into the game. So what was your message throughout that game to your team? Playing one of the you know best teams potentially, maybe even <laughs> in the state, they were defending state champions. What was your message to them to keep them guarded and just to stay in the game? Um, well, our message to them series really was just what we've been trying to get them to see all 
all year is that um, confidently, like, I believe we do have a team that can, you know, go compete with anyone in the state. Um, when we do what we're supposed to do and what we've been trying to teach these girls. Um, Lovejoy is an awesome team. And with, um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Brianna and Lanaya Foster, Brianna Preston, Lanaya Foster, um, you know, they, they, you know, they're going to be, they're going to do what they do, what they do best, consistent. Lanaya, I mean, I love her, her game. Um, Brianna's fast, quick with that basketball. So our, you know, we're just trying to do what we can to limit their touches as much as possible. And we didn't do that. The first half, we played, you know, we didn't have much energy. Um, we just, we, we didn't have the focus that we've been, that we wanted to for for this game. Um, so when we came out halftime, I mean, we, that's what, we would just keep preaching that. Like, do what we've been talking about. Do, play our defense, um, which we did not do pretty much the whole first half. Um, when we finally decided to play our defense like we've been playing all year, then we kind of were able to go on a little run. Um and basketball, you know, basketball is a game of runs, and we can't. So we have to be able to withstand theirs and make sure we have ours. Um, and we didn't, we didn't really do what we were supposed to the, the first half of that game. Um, and all credit to Lojoy, they kind of took us out of our game. Offensively, what we like to do, get to the basket cut, they kind of limit all that. And then our girls kind of froze just for a little bit, like, oh, whoa, they took that away. What are we supposed to do? Still play basketball, right? Right. Um, so, but – Fortunately, they kind of woke up, and that's when we were able to play our defense, which is, I think, um, one of the things that make us who we are is our defense. Like, And that's the main thing that we I've been preaching this year, last year, before. Let your defense create your offense, right. and always. That's that's my thing. Let defense create. Because sometimes, like my brother say, your jump shot doesn't get off the bus with you sometimes. But there's no <laughs> excuse. There's no right. There's no. Excuse yeah, you're right for, though. You know, because yeah. sometimes you just don't got it going. But it could be that steal or that block that gets you going. Exactly right. So you so if something if you're what you're known for isn't working, pick it up on the pick it up on the defensive area because that's because that's all about that's the team that's the team right there right. So you give it all yep. for that instance and then watch miraculously. Oh wow, your shot goes in. That's a good right. Point. So and so then so that you know just just. Teaching them, you know, just get out yourselves for a little bit. Defense is tiring. It's hard work. It is very hard work. <laughs> yep. But like, especially the way we play. Um, but if we if we do it together and do it right, then hopefully, hopefully, we can be that last team standing in March. So, which is always our goal. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. So, final question on Lovejoy, and I'm leaving that alone. You had some success <laughs> I saw trapping Brianna Preston and bringing that extra defender up uh, towards <laughs> you know second half, maybe even the middle of the game. So, without revealing too much, Coach, do you think you'll maybe implement a couple more of those traps in there if you guys see them in a region tournament or maybe even see them in the playoffs as well? Yeah, I, our, you know, we're trying to do what's, what's best um, for what's working for us in that moment. Yeah, we, Brianna is there. She's, they got, we want to try to do what we can, not let her, not have, let her have that basketball and just pick <laughs> us apart, which is what she was able to do. It's just kind of like, right. come on. So if we can, whatever we need to do to try um, and get the basketball out of her hands as soon, as early as possible, that's what we're going to try and do. So, yeah. Got you. All right. So let's talk about Keely Chapman and that highlight clip I showed a little bit earlier, Coach. Mm -hmm. She was hitting some threes in the game. Mm -hmm. She seemed like she could be a kind of a um, – floor spacer if you need it or you need to get somebody kind of a spell. So talk about her impact. She's just young, too. She's only a sophomore. Yeah. So that's kind of the good thing, too, yeah. Coach. You'll be able to build almost a big three with how young they are. But tell me about her impact yeah. and what she meant to your team as well. Well, I think, well, for one with Keely, so she was hurt for about a good three weeks. Wow. Um, so, yeah, she hurt her, she hurt her hand. Um, and I'm going to just tell you the kind of player that she is. Oh, I can't even remember the game. It's been so long when she hurt her hand. I'm sorry. But she hurt her. She injured her hand. <laughs> like, her finger was broke. Wow. But she caught the basketball and still made the shot. That, like, in pain. So that kind of tells you the kind of player that Keely is. Like, I mean, wow. like, to your point, I have a great sophomore class. Um, number 22, Delaney Cooper. I mean, she reminds me, if she, if she wants to, she can get that basket at any point. Um, right. So, yeah, and so, like, with Keely, her, I think the main motivation with her was being able to sit on the sideline and see her teammates playing. You know, that's a huge motivating factor. Like, you want to be in there and you can't. And she was able to she was able to see different things that was going on on the court. So when she came in, I mean, and obviously she actually was able to work on her shot because she couldn't really use 
her right hand much. So, you know, until like she was, um, she wasn't able to use her hand as much. So actually her shots actually even gotten better um, mm. than it was wow. before it was injured. So, yeah. So, and she just, I mean, she just had that mindset too. Like she does, there's no fear. She just going to go in and do what needs to be done um, and get it done. So that's the kind of player she is. And she's very vocal both on and off the court. Um, just watch her around. I see she, the team, they kind of they follow her. So it's, it's good to have a player like that. Definitely. Um, and and I, her dream actually is to be a coach. And you can kind of see that. Um, you can kind of see, see her leadership skills that she has on the court. And I'm also, sure she, yeah. I'm sure she's going to pick up a couple of things from you, coach. <laughs> well, I hope so. I mean, that's, that is my, that's my thing, you know, just leave it better than I found it. And hopefully like with these, I, I leave some kind of a good lasting impression on my, on my players. So, yeah. Definitely. So another thing, Coach, you guys play already mm -hmm. a tough schedule. You play some of the top teams in the state, Griffin. Uh, you play Lovejoy. You play Forest Park. But you defeated a really good team in 5A. They're still undefeated in their region, 11-0. and Kale, 57-56. Um, mm -hmm. I, I looked at the stat sheet and seen, you know, it was a struggle. It seemed like um, for maybe both sides, just, you know, great defensive game. Just what stood out to you mm -hmm. from that game? How were you able to beat such a great team? You're a great team in yourself. But what kind of stands out to you from that game? Um, from that game, it was again, like you said, it was a defensive battle, um, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're preaching it all the time, like, give it, give it, right? I don't, not too many teams I play defense as long, like full court the entire game, but that's what we try to do, and we we can condition for that, and we try, you know, we try to. That, I mean, that's something I learned from in my high school that we were pretty much pressing. Um, and we're like half court, we, half court, we, we can do all right, but our strength and stuff is that full court defense, pressure, 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 pressure. And I think that's what, and I mean, they, and Kale, you know, they have a great team. Um, so it was definitely a dog fight. I mean, definitely said it went down to the wire. Um, fortunately our defense held out. So, and that's, that's, our, at the end of the day, if, that's what, that's what we, that's what we want. That's what we yep. want. Like, again, if it's not working, pick that defense up pick that yep. defense up and that's and that's what our players did that's what the team did they really stepped it up on defense so we got I, I was, we got quite a few steals back to back that kind of helped us put us over um so that's that's what we want to do got pressure, you, pressure pressure yeah pressure 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 i got you yeah so <laughs> Coach, what stands out to you from the 6A landscape for some of the great teams you're probably going to face after the region tournament and into the postseason? Um, I mentioned a couple, but just what stands out to you from that? Or is it more so we focus on what we focus on? We control what we control. It's all about us. Like, what's kind of your, your mindset? Yeah, it's a little both. Actually, okay. I mean, I'm, it's, it definitely is all about us, um, but we're not going to discount the, the simple fact that we're in a tough region alone. Not even six A classification, just our region alone. Yeah. Um, is tough, right? Like Forest Park, Lovejoy, Rockdale. I mean, yeah, it's it's a battle. It's a battle <laughs> every day. Um, so not even so not even but but we also need to make sure that we come and do what we're supposed to do. Not mm -hmm. not discounting the other teams, but we can't if we're not gonna do what we are supposed to do consistently, then What's what's the, actually what's the other teams matter? If we can't do what we're supposed to do first, yep. and then we can kind of like, and then we can focus on, all right, this is what you know, this is what uh, this team would do here. This is what they like to run here, but first we need to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do consistently, um, and then we can turn our attention to um, the other teams. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's because it's gonna be a fight no matter who who yeah. we're playing. Honestly, like I, I learned like. At the end of the day, like, regardless, teams teams get want to beat. We're we're defending champs, and we're gonna get everybody's best game, at no matter who we're playing. Um, I definitely try to make sure that our schedule is that we're playing the best of the best to get us ready for these moments here post post season. But even during regular season, we gotta understand we're getting everybody's best game because everybody you know wants to beat the defending state champs at right. any point. So, um, so we got to make sure that we are locked in, staying focused and true to who we are, and that we are bringing our A game every single time we step out on that court. And, and then coach, know yep. that we've done that stuff. Yeah, I'm saying just know that, I mean, yep. that you've earned that right to want to, to get everybody's best game. So now you got to right. go 
and show why you are where you are, right? Like, yep. yeah, you got it. Yeah, so, yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. So yeah. what's been your favorite thing about this group this season, Coach? Just seeing where it started, being midseason, mm -hmm. being to where you are now, about to go on the tournament run. Just what's been your favorite thing, Coach, in this group? I just, uh, I just love their chemistry. The simple fact that they get along um, with each other a lot off the court helps translate onto the court. Um, I kind of work in the front office, so I, I love seeing them every day. I get, like, I kind of see them um, where my, uh, where my office is. It looks outside to the, uh, the atrium of our school, so I get to see them, and I, I'm seeing them as they're interacting with each other, like all the time. They're pretty much never apart. At least, <laughs> like two or three of them are always together at all the, at all times, and I love that. Um, and they are they're just a fun group to coach. They um, they bring the energy. They are they are excited about it, and I think the main thing is that they want to be here. And like you you know I've, you can coach some teams that they're just that, that this is just something that yeah I'm just You're going through you know, the motions. Yes, going through the motions exactly. But these these this team right here, they they legitimately want to be here, and I'm truly blessed to be able to you know coach them. So I think that's the that's one of the best parts is that they that they want to be here, they want to get better, they want to do better. So. Gotcha, coach. Final question. I'll let you go, coach. Um, mm -hmm. Just your defending state champion. What's the ultimate goal you want to accomplish with this group this year? Um, what would be a successful season for Woodward Academy girls basketball in your eyes? Um, well, my, my, a successful season for one success to me, I, I kind of play off uh, coach John Wooden It's just being able to, you know, say that you gave the best that you were able to give when you, at the end of the day, you can look in the mirror and say, you have nothing left, left to give that's success in my book. Um, and hopefully that ends with another ring. Hopefully that ends with us being the last team standing. But overall, that's my main, you know, that's the main thing, success, that these girls have fun, they learn something that can translate, and they are, the be they are, you know, the best. Not only are they great athletes when they leave here, but they're just awesome people. So overall, that's my first thing. But then, of course, you know, I would love to get one more ring. I mean, let's just be honest with that. I mean, who won't want that, right? Be able to put that on True. there. I would love to have Sarah go out as one of the most decorated players here at Woodward Academy. If she was able to accomplish this, um, take that into George Washington with her, that um, she is one of the most decorated players. Love to give her um, uh, her and Brian, my other senior, going a nice little going away, going away present with one more ring. So that would be a region champ, state champs, you know. That's always the ultimate goal. Um, but as far as success, like we want to make sure that they are they're doing the things that they're committed that they said they were committed to doing in order to help us reach those. And they can say that at the end of the day, if you can say that when the game is over, you had nothing left. However, it turns out, then that's success in my book. I just I had a couple of regret, regrets um, from college, and I don't want these play. I don't want my girls to ever have those. No regrets. So. No regrets. I got you, Coach. Well, I want to say thank you so much for joining the show, taking your time out of today uh, to be on here with me. Um, pleasure learning more about your team and seeing guys up close and personal. Definitely was a fun game. I enjoyed watching. Uh, yeah. Wish you guys success in the region tournament, in the um, state tournament as well. And hopefully I get to have you on here soon before the season wraps up. Well, love it. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you reaching out. So thank you so much. Looking yes, forward to it. Looking forward to the yes, next time. Till next right. time. Yes, ma'am. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. So that was um, Woodward Academy's coach, um, Kim Lawrence. Uh, again, just real quick to wrap up for them. Um, really enjoyed seeing them in person. I have a great group of girls, really focused. Again, a lot of youth, but she's coaching them up the right way. And, you know, a thing to watch out for them is their defense. That's something she, she talked about a lot in this interview. Um, pressure, pressure, pressure. Let the defense lead the offense. So that's kind of how their program is predicated on. And um, I think there's a team to watch out for, obviously, in 6A. Again, it'll be a tough, tough state tournament because it's a lot of good teams coming out of 6A. So we'll see how they fare. We'll see if they're able to kind of come out of the region tournament with the overall win. If not, I'm sure she'll get her girls prepared for the state tournament run. So it'll be really intriguing to see how it all shapes out and pans out. So definitely appreciate you coming on. But before we wrap for today, got to do my favorite segment of the show. That is Najee's Top 10 headlines going into the weekend so let's go ahead and get into it all right so number one jack merklinger from savannah country day he lands a uga offer
plans to visit the school very, very, very soon. Um, that is a major offer. Um, he, I believe, is a four-star. Um, he's been exceptional um, in his junior season. He's going to be a senior. Be interesting to see where he can land and where he can take that team. Uh, obviously, they lost to Cedar Grove in the playoffs, a team that was a defending state champion, a really good team. But how far can he take them next year? Where is he going to decide to commit and sign to? That would be a really interesting storyline to watch. And obviously one of the big storylines going into the weekend. Number two, Grayson versus Newton, Friday night basketball. This is going to be for, excuse me, the region, number one seed. Definitely go check the game out if you if, if you can. Um, I believe it will be in Grayson, uh, 7 p.m. kickoff. I mean, that's going to be a great region game. A lot of superior talent, a lot of D1 talent, as Coach Gibbons alluded to today. Um, that is something to watch out for. And going into the weekend. All right, number three, Peachtree Ridge. I think that's a team to watch out for in Region 7. Why I say that, they are 20-5. and five. They picked up a huge um, upset win against Norcross, 58-55, to 55, January 31st. That is going to be a team to watch out there in 7A. How good is that team? Can they make some noise in the postseason? Can they pull off a couple of upsets? We've seen a couple years ago, Willer um, was upset about Grovetown. You know, can Peachy Ridge be one of those teams going into the postseason and the tournament um, being able to make that big upset? I think that's going to be a major headline to see as we continue to go into the region tournaments and playoffs. So that's my number three. Number four, I mean, if you didn't see the game, I don't know what you were doing on Monday night. Um, he has solidified for me, and I've seen some of the top high school games um, this year, as far as just watching them on TV and things like that, some in person. Isaiah Collier is the best player in the country. I think that just needs to be go ahead and said. Um, I think he's number one on 247 Sports. I think he's number one on Rivals. I think ESPN still has him number three, but he's a top player in the state. For him to put on that kind of a performance under that spotlight, 27 and 7, 27 points, 7 assists, the guy's a stud. Whenever he got a head of, head of steam, he was unguardable. Nobody could get in front of him. Even their, one of their better defenders, Stephon Castle, did force some steals, but it was tough for him to stop him as well. He's just an unguardable force. So number four, going into um, obviously the weekend, again, it's that caller, best player in the country. All right, number five, Ste uh, this is a hard one to say. Okay, Stephens County, excuse me. Upsets number three, Monroe Area at home on Tuesday night, 64-53. to 53. Major win for them. Monroe Area is one of the best teams in, I believe, 3A. I think they're number one and number two in our rankings. Uh, Stevens County is only 12-10 and 10 on, the, uh, on the year. So that was a major win for them Tuesday night to get that upset win. So that's another headline going into the weekend. Number six, coach I had on earlier when my show kind of debuted, Coach Josh Jones. He picked up his 100th career win Tuesday night over Rabin County. Um, Elbert County, if you guys don't know, they won it all last year. Another team that's going to be contending for the title out in, I think, is uh, Class A Division II. Um, so just want to wish him congratulations and shout-out Coach Josh Jones for um, picking up his 100 career win on Tuesday night. And then number seven, are we sleeping on Bainbridge in 4-8? Currently, they are 23-1. and Only loss was to Lowndes this season. I think it was 47-46 uh, by one point. Is that a team that can make some upsets in 4A, obviously right now the favorite is going to be McDonough at 22-3. and three. Seen them this year. They have an exceptional pace. Uh, four phenomenal guards, Junior, Keenan Gray, obviously seniors, Avante Nichols, Davion Thomas, um, Amon McDowell. You know, is that kind of their classification to lose? That'll be interesting to see. They got, I think it was a Final Four finish uh, last season. Uh, can they win it all this year? Um, but, again, can Bainbridge kind of play that spoiler out there? If they're 23-1, and one, they're not talked about a lot. So can they play spoiler in 7A? That'll be interesting to watch out for. And as I mentioned earlier, number eight, watch out for 7A in girls basketball. Kind of under the radar. I know I said 6A, but 7A girls basketball, I think it'll be really interesting to see who wins it all. Will it be Norcross? Will it be Brookwood? Will it be Archer? Uh, will it be Buford? Any of these teams can make some noise. I think Brookwood has one loss all year on the season. So that is going to be a conference to watch out for, or I keep saying conference, classification to watch out for besides 6A, 7A girls basketball. All right, number nine, guy that made our scores top 10, Bryce Hicks. Again, guy that's been blowing up all summer long. Very happy for him. Um, you know, he made Max Max Prep's um, All-American team, I believe, our, our top team um, 
you know, he made our scores top 10. I think before that he wasn't getting a lot of notice and things like that. But now he just recently picked up an offer from Georgia State. He picked up also, you know, a couple of weeks ago an offer from University of Memphis. So just happy to see the guy um, being able to pick up these offers, being able to have D1 schools uh, reach out to him because, you know, a lot of people are worried about his height and things like that. But if you're a ball player, you're a ball player. It's that simple. And I think he, the guy's just a ball player. He can catch the ball out the backfield. He can run it. Um, in the big game this past season, in, in a playoff game against Colquitt County on the road, 37 carries, 205 yards. I mean, the guy's a baller, and he plays defense as well. So I'm just happy, excited for him that he's picking up these offers. Got to watch out for in that Kelton group that made it all the way to the state championship but fell short. They did face a buzz all in Mill Creek. Then number 10, um, well, actually, I'm going to put an extra headline on here because I think this is big two after this one. But number 10, Eric Godfrey, he is the new head coach of North Gwinnett High School. I think that's a major key there. Um, he came from Parkview. We won region championships. Be interesting to see how quickly he can get that North Gwinnett program up and going. Um, I think they didn't make the playoffs, but can he get them past that kind of quarterfinal, second round kind of thing? Can he get them up towards a state championship in his senior there? That's something to watch for. But the last major headline that you guys got to look out for came out from AJC Today, GHSF, Georgia High School Football Daily, mentioned it as well on their Twitter handle. Go check them out. Buford versus St. Francis to start the season. That is in talks right now. And that's going to be a top 10 matchup nationally. So, I mean, there's so many storylines to grapple with in that one, right? Buford goes out second round. They were kind of a staple in 6A. They won, I think, three straight... Uh, state championships, how are they going to look going into next season? Who's going to be the QB1? You know, will he be able to get them up to fold um, quickly going into next season? They got all that talent. They got probably two of the top three maybe prospects in the country. Edric Houston, defensive line, defensive end. Then you got um, K.J. Bolden. You know, I think next year he's going to be a more kind of important part, integral part of the offense with obviously Justice Haynes now graduating and going to Alabama. So how will they look out? If that's their first game of the season, how are they going to look against St. Francis, who's another really good team from Baltimore? And, you know, will they be able to kind of get back to, you know, what they were? They had a big loss to Walton um, in the second round this year. Can they get back to the state title? So I think that first game is going to tell you a lot about Buford, how good they really are. And they can contend with a top 10 team potentially in the rankings um, in the start of the season. It'll show you what kind of season they're going to have next season. So um, I think that's another major storyline as well going into the weekend. Watch out for that matchup. Might be nationally televised, but St. Francis and Buford next year. That's going to be epic. So, again, guys, thanks for tuning in. This is all I got for today. That is Najee's top 10 headlines. Hope you guys enjoyed. A lot of headlines going into the weekend. Um, we'll see you guys next Thursday for another episode of Keeping It Real Najee Wilkins. And we'll have, a whole, all, as always, a whole bunch of guests, some good headlines, and um, maybe even a couple tell the tapes. So uh, we'll see you guys next week and tune into the show tomorrow at 12 at noon for Craig's show. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>